Okay, well, let's move on to what we're talking about today, um, intervening in nature. And there's a range of different issues, um, some of which are fairly mainstream kind of questions. And towards the end, we'll get to some things that are a little bit more uh, at their extreme, if you like, on the edge of um, what some people are thinking. So I'm going to start with this question of biodiversity and exotic species. You remember that I gave you the quote from Aldo Leopold that a thing is right if it preserves the integrity, stability, and beauty of the biotic community. Um, that doesn't say anything as such about exotic species, um, though it does talk about integrity. And that suggests that um, an invasive species that is going to destroy the integri integrity of the biotic community might, not, might be something that Leopold and environmentalists who think like Leopold would uh, want to get rid of. But the question is, what is going to destroy the integrity of that community and what isn't? Um, in fact, what we have is a general sense that a lot of people have that somehow exotics are bad, that we don't want exotics in our national parks, for example, um, or we don't want them in wild areas generally. And if you ask, well, what's an exotic? The usual definition is something that came here after Europeans um, came to the United States. So for this country, I guess you could say exotics are things that came here after 1492, well, not the United States, but let's say the Americas more generally, um, after Columbus. Uh, similar debate goes on in Australia where European settlement is dated from 1788, so it's a more recent um, period. But this is the sense, that things that were there before Europeans got here and messed things up um, are, um, are uh, OK, and the other things are a problem. So there's an article by uh, Davis and a number of other ecologists challenging that. And one of the examples that they talk about is the tamarisk. Um, there are a number of species of the tamarisk, which um, is, as you can see in this photo, quite an attractive tree. Um, some people have them in their gardens. They have these, uh, these sort of feathery foliage and um, pink flowers. So uh, people enjoy them for that reason. But, but they've got into parts of the southwest, um, dry areas where they spread uh, quite well. And um, as I say down the bottom here, US Congress has authorized quite substantial sums of money to get rid of the tamarisks. And the question is, is it worth getting rid of the tamarisks? Is it worth spending that money? Is it a good thing in general to get rid of tamarisks? Um, as Davis and the co-authors signing that article pointed out, um, it was originally thought that it uh, uses a lot of water, that it um, succeeds because it sends down its roots deeper than other trees and therefore sucks up more water and in that sense is drying out the terrain. Um, but it now turns out, and they've done more studies, that that doesn't seem to be the case, that it uses similar amounts of water to other similarly sized vegetation in that area. Um, another point that uh, Davis and co make um, is that it seems to be the preferred nesting habit of an endangered bird, um, the southwest willow flycatcher. So if you succeeded in getting rid of the, of the tamarisk, you might actually make this endangered bird um, possibly become extinct or anyway reduce its prospects of survival. So why, why are these efforts being made? It seems that they're being made purely because there's some sense that it doesn't belong there. It wasn't there before Europeans arrived um, and uh, we want to have the southwest as it was before Europeans arrived. But in fact um, that in any case is, is not going to happen. Europeans have changed the southwest in a variety of ways. Um, a lot of it was grazed for example for cattle including country that's not grazed now because it turned out not to be sustainable that um, you put cattle on it, they eat the grass, um, it's too dry for the grass to recover, the soil starts blowing around, you've changed the environment in any case. 
So um, given that we don't really have in uh, most of these areas completely pristine environment, I think that's another reason for saying uh, you can't recreate uh, the biotic community before Europeans came to this country. So why not make different sets of judgments? Why not make judgments on whether these species are in fact supporting diversity of wildlife? Or even if you like, whether we find them attractive um, or whether they're useful in some way. Uh, I think those are, are possible ways of judging and the judgment that it's bad because it uh, wasn't here many centuries ago, uh, Davis and et al are arguing is not a sufficiently good basis to decide this on. And that seems to me to be uh, generally sound. In other words, that rather than take a in principle view that anything that's in a wild area uh, that wasn't here before ought to be got rid of, we ought to be looking at this on a case by case basis and say, is this something we want or is it not? In other words, we shouldn't have what uh, you might call a kind of um, hostility to foreigners, um, which uh, we tend to think is not a good thing when we're talking about human beings and we don't want to judge among immigrants as to how recently they came here, but um, we seem to be prepared to do this to plants. And um, I think maybe that's something that we ought not to be doing unless we have better reasons for it. 